Chapter 956, Trading Resources for Cultivation Time fleeted by quickly and seven days passed by. The Nine Dragons Alignment Array had been finally completed and the Radiant Golden Shield gradually disappeared. The world energy fluctuation seemed to have returned to its original state just like nothing had happened. However, the female Taoist, Daoist Sichuan, who had been stranded outside Nine Dragons Island, was perfectly aware that the might of the array had already reached a very terrifying level, given that it had crazily absorbed the world energy from all directions for the last seven days. Something is strange, master. The girl in a white dress that was fluttering in the wind stood on the bow deck while staring at Nine Dragons Island and suddenly spoke. Daoist Sichuan opened her eyes and slightly turned to her, asking, What strangeness are you sensing? I feel like the scenery in front is gradually turning kinda blurry, master, answered the girl. Also, if you listen to the sounds in the surroundings, there were some sounds coming from the island previously, but now nothing can be heard but the sound of the tide hitting the shore. This made Daoist Sichuan's expression slightly shift. Her expression suddenly changed and she released her perception toward the front quickly as her face went pale. She coughed up a mouthful of blood just as her spiritual sense touched an invisible layer of obstruction. It was like there was some kind of monster that was able to swallow and devour her spiritual sense there. Cough, cough. After coughing two mouthfuls of blood, Daoist Sichuan stared at the island in front in disbelief. She vaguely realized that the Nine Dragons Island at present was blurring and not even the slightest voice could be heard from there. The longer she and her disciples observed the island, the more blurred the island became, up till it completely disappeared from their sight. Daoist Sichuan was still able to confirm that Nine Dragons Island was still there with her spiritual sense, but not with her eyes. There was nothing in her vision but the boundless sea. Master, called out the girl, a look of hesitation on her face. Be at ease. I'm fine and there's nothing to worry about, said Daoist Sichuan with a forced smile. A very powerful array expert has arranged a peerless array to surround and cover the entirety of Nine Dragons Island. Even with my ability, I still wouldn't be able to figure out the mystery of this place had I not seen the island previously. You all must remember not to easily provoke anyone on this island once we land later. But you're a golden core stage expert, master, said the girl. Even if the person on that island is very powerful in arrays, it's only one skill. That person's cultivation is probably not on par to yours, right? We are yet to know the owner of the island, so don't draw such a conclusion easily. Daoist Sichuan shook her head and said, also. Even if the cultivation level of the person who has arranged this array is lower than mine just like you said, it's easy to kill me once he activates this peerless array. Suddenly, Daoist Sichuan and her four disciples suddenly saw the air in front of them fluctuate and a portal appear out of nowhere. Inside it, they could clearly see the scenery of Nine Dragons Island. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Several figures came flashing through the portal lightning fast. The first to appear before Daoist Zixuan was her six disciples, followed by Tang Xiao and the Mo brothers. Master. Jean Chanzi, Jean Xinzi, and the other four knelt in the air and respectfully called out. Daoist Zixuan raised her jade-like fingers slightly as six streams of qi raised them up. Then, she nodded to them with satisfaction and said, You've done well, my disciples. You ran into evil people and got rid of them. Additionally, you also inadvertently came to Nine Dragons Island, providing us the chance to meet other powerful cultivators, a great merit in and of itself. I'll give you a handsome reward once we come back to our section. Thank you, Master, the six youths happily replied. Seeing that Daoist Zixuan's eyes shifted to him, Tang Ziat then smiled and cupped his fists. I must apologize for the negligence I've shown you while you've visited my Nine Dragons Island, Senior. I've ordered some people to boil some good tea, and I invite Senior to come to my island to enjoy it. Is your distinguished self the island master? Daoist Sichuan slightly bowed and said, May I know your distinguished self's title? My name is Tang Xiao, 
I'm indeed the owner of this Nine Dragons Island, said Tang Shou smilingly. May I know which sect, school and under which respectable elders tutelage fellow Daoist Tang comes from asked Daoist Zixuan again. We're all fellow Daoist in the ascetic circle, maybe I know your master as well. While pointing to Jean Chansey's group of six youths, Tang Xiao lightly smiled and said, I'm afraid that my answer would be to your disappointment, senior. I don't come from any school or sect, but I did chance upon a fortuitous encounter that made me obtain the inheritance that a certain senior Daoist left behind, thus making me embark on the cultivation path. The answer made Daoist Zixuan look surprised, yet she didn't ask more about the inheritance or the Daoist senior who had left it. Asking about that was taboo among cultivators. More so than that, Tang Xiao gave her a vague threatening feeling even though this young man was very young. She even found herself unable to see through Tang Xiao's cultivation level at all, although she could see that the two men behind this young man were at the foundation establishment stage. Is it you who arranged the array protecting this island, Daoist Tang? asked Daoist Zixuan again. I arranged it indeed. It took me half a month and quite a lot of material to complete it. Tang Xiao nodded and said, it also consumed a lot of my power. I wouldn't have spent too much of power if my cultivation level was much higher, though. The fact that you're able to arrange such a peerless array among today's cultivation circle is already an amazing ability in and of itself. Daoist Tang, sighed Daoist Zixuan in surprise. I dare say that there is no other cultivator on earth who has higher attainment in array than you. Ah. Uh. You're joking with me, senior. What I've achieved in array is nothing but the surface, it can hardly be called being an expert at it. Tang Xiao chuckled and said, Anyway, you've waited for a week outside, senior. Now that Nine Dragons Island's door is opened, would you like to continue our talk inside? <laughs> Daoist Zixuan couldn't help but laugh and said, The shock you gave me when you arranged the protection array on this island is really great. I do feel intrigued and can't wait to learn more about that, but I hope Daoist Tang doesn't take it as an offense. Also, thank you for your hospitality. Please. With a light smile on his face, Tang Xiao led Daoist Zixuan's people to the array portal, and quickly landed on the square outside the palace. The moment Daoist Zixuan entered Nine Dragons Island, she found that the number of guards here was much higher than she had seen previously. Just the places that entered her vision had hundreds of guards being stationed in various spots. Yet what made her feel incredulous was that most of these guards were cultivators. Although the aura they emitted out was weak and the strongest among them was just at the foundation establishment stage, the hundreds of cultivators alone still gave her a shock. One must know that training cultivators was a very difficult endeavor as the resources invested in each person was astronomical. But this place had so many cultivators, and every one of them gave out intense killing aura, evidence that they were ruthless people who had gone through numerous killings. I don't know whether it's appropriate, but there's something I'd like to ask you, Daoist Tang, said Daoist Zixuan as she stopped several meters away from the palace gate behind Tang Xiao. Please speak. Tang Xiao also stopped his pace. It's about the number of cultivators on this island. It's far beyond imagination, said Daoist Sichuan. You just said that you obtained some kind of inheritance and then embarked on the cultivation path. But what about them? Did you train them yourself? That's right. I've been fostering and training them. Tang Xiao nodded. As far as I know, Earth nowadays is scarce on cultivation resources, while the world energy itself is now very thin. Daoist Sichuan slightly frowned and said, wanting to train so many cultivators nowadays will be a very difficult task, but after I've observed around, most of them are at the qi refining stage, though there are also some at the foundation establishment stage. Isn't the resources needed to invest in them quite astronomical? This matter is actually a private issue and rather inconvenient to disclose to outsiders. But I think it's okay, to answer your question, senior, replied Tang Xiao slowly after he thought for a while. Today's earth is indeed quite scarce on resources for cultivation. 
The world energy is also very thin, but I didn't just obtain an inheritance, but also some cultivation resources as well. Aside from that, I'm a businessman in the secular world. With capital in hand and the good networking I have, I've naturally been able to procure a lot of precious herbs in a short time by spending money. Thus, training my men to this level is not a problem for me. It's just... Just what? asked Daoist Sichuan with a curious expression. The more cultivators I have under my command, the more I'm in short supply of cultivation resources, said Tang Xiao with a forced smile. I don't have any means to alleviate the predicament quickly should this situation continue any longer. Frankly speaking, the reason why I held your six disciples on my island and waited for your arrival is that I hope to grow a way to obtain cultivation resources. You mean, you want to obtain cultivation resource from my whole unitary sect? Daoist Sichuan's brows raised and she added, Or, do you want to make a deal with me? It's just like you said, senior. That's the plan I have in mind. Tang Xiao smiled and said, If senior can provide me some cultivation resources, I'm also willing to exchange goods with you or your section. Let's head inside and talk some more, Daoist Tang said Daoist Sichuan with a light smile. Tang Xiao also smiled and continued to enter the place with her and the rest. He personally led them to the spacious reception room on the second floor. After tea, snacks, and fruit had been served, Tang Xiao smiled and said, I rarely meet any fellow cultivators from the cultivation world, so I don't know the proper etiquette to entertain visiting cultivators in the community. I apologize if there's anything unsatisfactory in my hospitality, senior. There's no need for such a polite manner, Daoist Tang. I'm always a straightforward person in nature and never like to speak in a roundabout manner, said Daoist Sichuan casually while waving her hand. Also, I'm very interested in the proposition you just told me about. Chapter 957 Enemy Trace Daoist Zixuan's response this time was much to Tang Xiao's satisfaction. He made up his mind, making a plan to establish a relationship with the whole unitary sect right after he learned this sect's situation, and if possible, he would obtain some cultivation resources from this sect which had thousands of years of rich heritage. The everlasting feast hall itself was not in short supply of cultivation resources at the moment, it even had enough inventory for the next year. But the number of cultivation resources to carry out his plan to raise an army of cultivators while simultaneously raising and training a large number of children in the future would be astronomical. Hence, the more resources he procured, the better. From Jean Chanzi and his five brothers, as well Daoist Sichuan now, Tang Xiao could tell that they were from a righteous section. He had been secretly observing them and confirmed that they were not people with wicked and scheming minds so making a deal with them was unlikely to go wrong. Senior Zixuan, since you're interested in the deal I offer you, may I know how many cultivation resources your sect have accumulated in the past millennium? asked Tang Xiao seriously. I need to know whether it can meet my needs. Ah. Uh. Daoist Tang has quite a big appetite it seems. Daoist Zixuan let out a faint smile and said, you just said that my whole unitary sect has accumulated cultivation resources for over a thousand years. With such a long time, we indeed have accumulated a lot of resources. However, I'd like you to ask in return. What kind of benefits will you offer our whole unitary sect in exchange for our massive cultivation resources? Tang Xiao spread his hand out, and an ancient scripture suddenly appeared on his palm. He looked at Daoist Sichuan's curious face and asked, I don't know the level of cultivation art the whole unitary sect has, so I'd like to ask how high the realm of cultivation one can achieve in your sect? With a slightly shifted expression, Daoist Sichuan thought for a while and said, Frankly speaking, the most important cultivation art my sect has can make one breakthrough to the spirit formation stage. There's none at the said realm in my sect at the moment but we do have some powerhouses at the nascent soul stage. This ancient manual in my hand is a cultivation art that can make you break through to the great ascension stage, said Tang Xiao with a smile. Also, I can assure you that this cultivation is much more profound than any art your whole unitary sect may possess. 
Additionally, I can also trade a cultivation art at the crossing tribulation stage with your sect, should anyone from the whole unitary sect break through to the late stage of great ascension. Say what? Daoist Zixuan had been cultivating for centuries and had a firm and tempered mind. Despite that, she was still shocked as disbelief obviously filled her face upon hearing Tang Xiao's words. The Great Ascension and Crossing Tribulation Stages? Is it possible that such profound cultivation art still exists on earth nowadays? What I told you is the whole truth. The manual in my hands now is a cultivation art up to the Great Ascension stage, while I also have its continuation to the Crossing Tribulation stage, said Tang Xiao. If your whole unitary sect wants to get one, I need to know how many cultivation resources you can exchange to satisfy my needs. Daoist Zixuan's eyes were fixated at the cultivation manual in Tang Xiao's hands. If it wasn't the fact that she was on Nine Dragons Island and she had no confidence in dealing with Tang Xiao at the moment, she would have moved and snatched it immediately. If these cultivation arts were as profound, or even stronger, than her sex cultivation technique as Tang Xiao said, then it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that was equivalent to the utmost valuable treasure for her whole unitary sect. This matter is of great importance, Daoist Tang, so I need to discuss it with the elders in my sect first. Putting away the cultivation manual, Tang Xiao then replied with a smile, that's not a problem. I don't have many cultivation resources, but I have time. However, I'm not one who likes to waste time, so how long do I need to wait to know how much cultivation resources your whole unitary sect can exchange with me? Seven days, answered Daoist Zixuan without hesitation. Give me at most seven days of time. I'll leave now to return to my sect and discuss this matter with the elders. A week later, I'll come again and give you a reply as to how much we can afford to exchange with you. But I hope you don't deceive me, Daoist Tang, or my elders will be furious, spelling bad things for us. If so, then I'll be waiting for good news from you, Senior Zixuan, said Tang Xiao smilingly. Immediately after, Daoist Zixuan said, Daoist Tang, I heard from my young disciples that you have deep attainments in the lightning evoker art, which I have some mastery in as well. Would you mind sparing some time to compare notes? Since Senior Zixuan has such interest, shall we go to the sea outside then, said Tang Xiao smilingly. I don't want this newly reconstructed Nine Dragons Island to be destroyed by us. All right. Quickly after, Tang Xiao opened the portal of the island's array so that he and Daoist Sichuan could flash outside, leaving the rest of the people to appear several kilometers away from Nine Dragons Island. While floating in the air, Daoist Sichuan looked at Tang Xiao dozens of meters away from her as she seriously said, Please be careful, Daoist Tang. Bang. Just as her voice faded away, thunder roared from the firmament and dark clouds began to emerge, covering hundreds of square meters. A series of numerous lightning sparks followed, but each bolt was very thin, the thickest just thumb-sized. Tang Xiao smirked with a slight contempt while watching the lightning magic conjured by Daoist Zixuan. He was thinking whether he had to show off his fullest power or not since he also needed to showcase a shocking display that would act as a deep deterrent to Daoist Zixuan. He was afraid that this female would look down on him and pay him no attention in the next transaction should he avoid doing so. After all, his lightning conjuration magic was too mysterious. Added with his current cultivation which was comparable to the late stage of Golden Core, the might that it produced was something that not even any nascent soul or soul formation powerhouses could achieve. Yet, if he were to expose too much, it would make Daoist Zixuan think that his lightning evoker art was very powerful, thus inciting her greed and probably driving her to make a bad move. Hey, whatever. I'll just expose the level of power I used when dealing with those two old farts from Celestial Wizard Clan then. After he made up his mind, the display of ability showcased by Daoist Zixuan also ended. At this time, his figure streaked into the sky and appeared hundreds of meters above the surface of the sea. He stretched his arms out and the dispersing dark clouds in the sky began to gather again. The number and intensity of the dark clouds 
now were even more substantial than the ones produced by Daoist Zixuan's lightning conjuration magic prior, also covering a much larger radius in the sky. Thunder rumbled and lightning flashed amid the dark clouds hung over in the sky. For whoever looked up at the sky, it was like the world was waiting for the arrival of doomsday. Lightning flashes were looming in the clouds and the rumbling of thunderclaps sent shocks that pierced the eardrums. Flashing backward for hundreds of meters away from the area, Daoist Zixuan looked up and stared at the sky dumbfoundedly with her body slightly trembling. The current scene before her was something out of her expectation. What's more, it was just a phenomenon created by the conjuration of lightning art, no less. H. How, how is he able to achieve this? What kind of profound lightning art has he been cultivating exactly? This phenomenon alone has exceeded my wildest imagination already. How terrifying is the level of power when it blasts out? Lightning Ocean Standing at hundreds of meters midair, Tang Shou's shout suddenly rumbled in the sky. All of a sudden, lightning bolts the size of an arm flash down from the layers of cloud like countless falling meteors from the night sky, blasting the distant sea surface. The lightning blasts covered a half-kilometer radius, and whether it was its number, speed, or might, it was at least ten times stronger than the ones displayed by Daoist Sichuan. The lightning bolts flashed down and the phenomenon lasted for a minute. The moment the lightning downpour stopped, the dark clouds in the firmament dissipated and the rumbling thunderclaps were also disappeared. At the same time, the half-kilometer area that was baptized by lightning bolts was now covered by a massive number of dead sea creatures. The more time passed, the more dead fish came floating onto the surface. Tang Xiao then flew to the front of Daoist Sichuan and looked at her dazed beautiful face, saying with a faint smile, It seems my lightning conjuration magic is much better than yours. That's right, I also heard from your disciple, Jean Chanzi, that you're very obsessed with lightning magic. We can also have an exchange if you want to learn more advanced lightning magic from me. Daoist Sichuan returned back to her senses and looked at the faintly smiling Tang Xiao. But now, admiration had birthed inside her heart. She was not afraid of Tang Xiao if they had to have a mortal combat since lightning magic was not the only power she possessed. But she had to admit Tang Xiao's mastery on this aspect and was convinced by him. Then I'll hold on to your words today, Daoist Tang, said Daoist Sichuan seriously. I'll bring a lot of cultivation resources when I come again later, so don't take back your words later. Don't worry. Tang Xiao nodded and said, I won't take it back. After a long while, Tang Xiao returned back to Nine Dragons Island, whereas Daoist Sichuan brought her ten disciples and left on the liner. Therefore, there was no one from the whole unitary sect staying on the island anymore. The rest of the remaining people were now Tang Xiao's subordinates. Just as Tang Xiao arrived outside the palace, Missouri An appeared in front of him and reported with a solemn face. We got news from the 14th island, boss. Our men have spotted two liners cruising towards us not far away from them. Also, judging from the direction of Daoist Sichuan's departure, they are bound to run into these two liners within two hours. Have you confirmed the identity of these people? asked Tang Xiao with a frown. I don't have 100% certainty, but the report from our men on the 14th island said that these people were the same attire as those two celestial wizards, killed by us, answered Mo An. If these people are really from the celestial wizard clan, then our time to play has come, sneered Tang Xiao. Notify everyone and prepare the choppers for taking off. I want all foundation establishment members to board the choppers in 10 minutes and head to the 14th island. It seems like the battlefield I need has finally been delivered. Your order will be carried out immediately, boss, said Mo An. However, casualties among our men will be inevitable once the battle begins. While we are currently recruiting men, if we lose too many men, I'm afraid. It's quality that counts in an army, so what are you afraid of, he sneered Tang Xiao. Don't you also understand that only in battles can you sharpen yourself and make rapid progress in your cultivation and practical experience? Chapter 958 Unavoidable Clash 
Back when Tang Xiao made up his mind to form an army of cultivators, he still had another concern in mind. Since this age was a peaceful era, it was an entirely different situation from the brutal and cruel environment of the immortal world. But for those who wanted to be true cultivators, they must frequently experience the edge of life and death and grow up in bloodshed and slaughter. Only then would they be able to become stronger and ultimately transform into real powerhouses. At the present, after he realized that he just provoked a very dangerous clan, instead of having any fear, he felt very excited and even had faint anticipation for the upcoming battle. Chack, chack, chack. Amid the roaring and whirring propellers, a total of ten helicopters were rushing into the sky, leaving behind the billowing sea and flying toward the 14th barren island towards the southeast. Lord, the people of this celestial wizard clan are nothing but ant-like existences in my view. But why do you have to pay so much attention to them and have even dispatched your men to clash with them? You only need to send me and I can completely annihilate them. Ji Chimei, who had been sitting next to Tang Xiao, spoke. Her eyes were full of indifference and she ostensibly didn't care at all about any threats that might be brought by the celestial wizard clan. I have many means to annihilate this celestial wizard clan if I want to, Chimei, said Tang Xiao calmly. But I need to train our people, and only enemies can make our everlasting feast hall's members grow. They will have the actual combat experience necessary to become battle experts from this. Ji Chimei was immediately enlightened, yet she was still puzzled and asked again, but there's something I have yet to fully understand, Lord. Why do you want to form a cultivator army on Earth, though? Let's ignore the fact that the cultivation conditions on this planet are abysmal, there's just hardly any enemy for them here. Besides, I think you can still form an army of cultivators once we return back to the immortal world. Aren't you still able to recruit a large number of immortal warriors there, both saving trouble for you and being much more convenient? Not really. Tang Xiao shook his head and answered, education must start from when they are still babies. Those cultivators and immortals already have their own cultivation foundation. What they have experienced, as well as their background and whether they are sincere in following me are issues I must consider. The environment of the immortal world is complicated and we can expect to have our enemies people easily mix into our rank. Should we recruit experts there? Still, your reasoning is rather weak, Lord, argued Ji Chime. What if I tell you that I just don't want to waste my time idling here, while I also need a bunch of loyal experts under me, then? said Tang Xiao with a faint smile. You also know it's very boring living on Earth. Do you think it's a waste of time finding something to do here? Besides, we don't know how long we need to stay on Earth, to begin with. Thus, we need many people to accomplish light work for us, so it's a good thing to have more subordinates, no? Yes. Ji Chime respectfully nodded. After nearly an hour of flight, the helicopters finally arrived at the 14th Barren Island. The figures of strong men jumped from the dozens of meters high choppers and quickly formed two teams totaling 48 people, all of whom were at the foundation establishment stage. Tang Xiao then walked step by step in the air to the ground. Boss. A swarthy and sturdy man among the dozens of men who had long been waiting here quickly ran to the front of Tang Xiao and respectfully saluted. What's the situation? inquired Tang Xiao. Reporting as ordered, boss, saluted the burly man. The deep sea tracker we've released has been monitoring these two liners and the liner that just departed from Nine Dragons Island. Given their speed, the two parties are expected to run into each other within half an hour and the estimated location is near the Ninth Island. Do you have any map? asked Tang Xiao. The strong man took out the map from his arm and unfolded it before pointing to the coordinates of the Ninth Baron Island. Tang Xiao ruminated for a while and then spoke, Continue your surveillance duty and keep in touch with us. Do remember to stay hidden and pay attention to your own safety. If you find any other suspicious vessels apart from those two enemy ships, contact me at once. Also, if you find that the enemy is going to land on the island, Immediately evacuate and take precautions for your own safety. Do you want us to engage them, 
boss, asked the strong man. No. They are not your ordinary layman and your strength is absolutely not their match. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, Do keep in mind, you must follow my order in the future if you want to engage the enemy in battle. The better you perform, the more chances you get to become much stronger. Understood, replied the burly man reverently. Tang Xiao shifted his vision to the 48 Foundation Establishment experts and motioned for them. He then streaked up into the sky and entered the helicopter suspended more than 10 meters in the air in the blink of an eye. The rest followed and quickly returned to the helicopters. On the Ninth Barren Island Chui Jian was typing on a laptop keyboard in front of him, inputting a series of instructions. The laptop screen then split into four small displays, showing live footage of two liners slowly cruising on the calm sea. Our tracker has just captured the liner leaving from Nine Dragons Island, Captain. It's only six nautical miles from the other two ships. If those ships are also equipped with detection instruments, they should have spotted each other. A young man who was standing a few meters away from Chui Jian, turned his head and reported. Chui Jian's expression slightly shifted and he immediately inputted another series of instructions. The monitor in the upper left corner of his laptop then changed and a liner was quickly displayed on it. He could clearly see two youths sitting cross-legged in a cultivation posture on the ship's deck. Notify boss. The ocean stretched as far as the eyes could see, but Jean Chansey sat cross-legged on the deck, silently immersing himself in the cultivation art of his section. He was not at the late stage of foundation establishment and had yet to sense the threshold of the golden core stage. But he believed that he would have a breakthrough to the golden core stage one day in the future if he kept cultivating diligently, earning himself the honor of becoming an illustrious powerhouse among cultivators. Beep, beep, beep. Suddenly, the sound of alarm inside the liner rang and Jean Chansey instantly opened his eyes. The moment he and Jean Xingzi floated above, Daoist Sichuan's figure flashed and appeared beside them. We got some bad company ahead. Eyes squinted, Daoist Sichuan trained her vision on the ships in the distance that were cruising toward them as she spoke with indifference. What do you mean, master? asked Jean Chansey. You already know who those people are? The shipmaster has already contacted the ships from the bridge through their comms and asked about their identity. They just simply ignored. He also said that if we encounter such a situation at sea, then it's usually people with hostile intentions. Additionally, did you forget why you came to Nine Dragons Island in the first place? Jean Chansey was zoning out for a moment and immediately said, You mean those people are highly likely to be the celestial wizard people, master? And they came here to avenge their slain clan members? With her acutely keen eyesight, Daoist Sichuan had already been able to clearly see those standing on the liner's deck in the distance. Those people were dressed in black robes with staffs and weapons in their hands. It was the attire of celestial wizard clan members according to her knowledge of this clan. You all must remember that our cultivation emphasizes seeking the mystery of heavenly Tao and pursuing immortality not fighting for power and killing for no reason. Once we run into them, we are not to engage them in battle if they don't attack us first. But you just said yourself that the likelihood for them to not attack us is very slim, master. Jean Chansey frowned and said, besides, the reason why these celestial wizard people came here is for revenge, as well as probably to rob Nine Dragons Island. We won't interfere too much on the issue between Nine Dragons Island and the Celestial Wizard Clan. Daoist Sichuan lightly said, Our whole unitary sect doesn't fear the Celestial Wizard Clan, but there's no need to have any needless conflict if it's avoidable. I just hope Daoist Tang and Nine Dragons Island's people can deter this clan since we are trading with them, after all. You mean, we're not going to help Big Brother Tang, Master, asked Jean Chansey. We naturally won't stand idly if these celestial wizard people kill ordinary people for no reason, said Daoist Sishian lightly. But Daoist Tang and his men are all cultivators, and they are the ones who killed the members of this clan nonetheless, so we'll avoid being involved in this matter as much as possible. Jean Chansey fell into silence. 
He didn't know much about this celestial wizard clan, but he was aware that it was him and his five martial brothers who had been in conflict first with Wozniask and Wyker Salak. Although these two brothers didn't fall under the six brothers' hands, they were the ones who had destroyed their wicked deeds. Moreover, he also knew that there was a business deal between Tang Xiao and his master. The celestial wizard people were very powerful, and if they ultimately defeated Tang Xiao and his men, wouldn't it mean that the deal was as good as gone already, meaning that they also wouldn't be able to obtain the cultivation manual that could make them possibly reach the Great Ascension stage? Huh? Suddenly, he keenly sensed a bursting killing intent coming out from his master, Daoist Sichuan. At this moment, Daoist Sichuan's attention was trained on the two ships that were getting closer and closer. When the distance between the ships was less than a kilometer, a figure flashed lightning fast from the opposite liner and stood in front of her in the blink of an eye. Why are you boarding our ship, wizard from the Celestial Wizard Clan? The black-robed old man shot a look at Daoist Sichuan with brows slightly creased, saying, You know who we are? Who exactly are you? We're cultivators, replied Daoist Sichuan indifferently. You can call me Daoist Sichuan. The black-robed old man narrowed his eyes and cautiously observed her for a short while. Then he coldly said, Ascetics from mysterious Oriental China? But why are you here, and did you see anyone from my clan several days ago? I haven't seen them, but my young disciples did, answered Daoist Sichuan. Wozniask and Wyker's Salak of your clan killed ordinary people and thus clashed with my six young disciples. I also know your two clansmen have been killed. You're all thousands of miles from your home, did you come here to avenge them? The black-robed old man's complexion changed and he held the gem and laid staff upward, asking with boiling killing intent, Did you kill them? What if I did? asked Daoist Sichuan unflinchingly. And what if I didn't? Chapter 959 The Battle of Powerful Experts If you killed Wzniesk and Wikers, then you'll all die here today. The black-robed old man grimly growled tyrannically. If you didn't kill them, prove you're not involved with their deaths, else you won't escape your death sentence. Daoist Sichuan sighed inwardly and instantly unleashed her own killing aura, proudly saying, Even if we didn't kill your two clansmen, they deserve their deaths due to all the wicked deeds they had done. We are cultivators, seekers of the great Tao, who never wantonly kill innocents. We'll never shy away from erasing you should you dare to bring the fight to us. The black-robed old man no longer spoke. He quickly bit his finger and drew a row of exquisite blood-colored runes in the air, then fiercely pointed his staff towards Daoist Sichuan. A raging black fog suddenly blasted out of nowhere. As the blood runes began to disperse, countless interconnected blood threads began spreading out. They all seemed to have a life of their own and gradually turned into a sketch of a domain made of black fog. Tenebrous Domain A dazzling beam suddenly blasted out from the gem and laid in the staff in the black-robed man's hand. Gorgeous scarlet blood threads pervaded the black fog, forming a skull with bloody eyes. At the same time, countless smaller skulls stacked atop each other and ultimately formed a humanoid skeleton warrior. This made Daoist Sichuan's complexion greatly changed since she knew a bit about the Celestial Wizard Clan. Those from this clan who were able to cast Tenebrous Domain were the strongest among them. You wish to fight? Then a battle you'll have. Daoist Sichuan streaked into the sky. The black fog was highly viscous with a pungent stench, yet she was able to instantly create a clean passage and flashed several hundreds of meters upward into the sky. There, she shouted, Never once have I, Daoist Sichuan, ever killed insignificant Cretan. For being able to cast Tenebrous Domain, your distinguished self must be a top expert among the Celestial Wizard Clan, right? Then bring it on. Let's see who's stronger between us. Wizard of Origin, Blask Salak. The black-robed old man's mouth only opened slightly. Yet his voice was as though the sound of a raging sea that rapidly cruised its way toward Daoist Sichuan. The skeleton monster made of black fog followed by formed a bone whip in its hand and aggressively hurled itself toward Daoist Sichuan. Ocean of Swords 
Daoist Zixuan instantly unleashed the sheathed longsword on her back. Its blade multiplied by 2 to 4 to 16, and, in just less than half a second, turned into thousands of sword blade shadows, truly representing its name as a turbulent ocean wave made of swords. The roaring tide of swords turned into overlapping layers made of swords that stirred the black fog in the sky, and stormed over toward the skeleton monster. On the Ninth Barren Island As the ten helicopters stayed still in the air several meters above the land, shadowy figures flew out from the helicopter's cabins and landed on the coast. Chui Jian, who had long been waiting on the island, immediately put the laptop down and swiftly sprinted to greet Tang Xiao. He then saluted and reported, Chui Jian is reporting, boss. What's the current situation? asked Tang Xiao. The whole unitary sex ship has run into the celestial wizards and they are now engaging in combat, reported Chui Jian. You can watch their battle on the laptop there, boss. Tang Xiao then came to the front of the laptop. When his eyes fell on the laptop screen, he happened to see the scene when Daoist Zixuan's sword clashed with the black fog. She deserves to be called a golden core stage expert with such powerful striking power. But the technique of that celestial wizard clan's expert somehow looks like the ghost cultivation system's one. Anyway, Chui Jian. How far are they from this island? About 26 nautical miles, boss, answered Chui Jian. Tang Xiao narrowed his eyes before he turned around to look at the 48 foundation establishment experts, who had neatly stood by in rows. Then he issued an order in a deep voice, you are to stay here and are not to move without my orders. Chime, all. You both come with me to observe the battle. There's a speedboat nearby, boss, interjected Chui Jian quickly. I'll tell the men to take it there. No need for that. Tang Shou waved his hand and said, Let's set off, Chime. Yes. As Ji Chime replied, a stream of Qi instantly wrapped Tang Shou and Moao, and all of them quickly flashed into the distance. With her power, Ji Chime had already pinpointed the location of the fight easily with her spiritual sense. In just a few seconds, the three of them had arrived more than 20 miles away from their prior location. However, Tang Xiao wanted to see the ability showcased by the whole unitary sex people first, so he ordered Ji Chime to stay a few kilometers away and used binoculars to observe the battle. They are very strong, boss. At least a lot stronger than me. Mo Ao, who stood beside Tang Xiao, spoke with a solemn face. Tang Xiao shot him a glance and lightly said, Daoist Sichuan is an expert at the Golden Core stage, so of course she's much more powerful than you. But her striking power and technique don't show it. She's either hiding her power intentionally, or she has shallow combat experience. That wizard is weaker than her, but he obviously has richer combat experience. Although he's controlling the attacks of that skeleton monster, he still looks relaxed. But. But what, boss? Mo Al looked at him with a slightly changed expression. It's just like I said previously. Even if he has rich combat experience, his cultivation is still not Daoist Zixuan's match. He's at least able to fare well for several minutes, but he's on the losing side and will die. A few kilometers away from them. The overlapping layers of sword images were as though waves hammering the shore as they kept smashing the skeleton monster, forcing it to keep retreating. No matter how powerful the bone whip was, it was practically unable to fend off the ocean of swords, and was far from being a threat to Daoist Zixuan at all. The skeleton made of black fog and its bone whip kept collapsing while its attacking power was getting weaker every second. Fucking bitch. The black-robed old man's face turned more savage. Two streams of black fog suddenly wrapped around his legs and instantly propelled him up, carrying him onto the skeleton monster's left shoulder. He then used a sharp black stiletto to cut his own fingers, causing his blood to immediately drop down and be absorbed by the skeleton's body. Buzz. A billowing aura erupted from the skeleton monster while the endless black fog around it formed a large number of black skulls which quickly merged into the monster. 
In just a few seconds, the size of the skeleton monstrosity nearly doubled and the bone whip grew bigger, bringing more explosive power. Break. Green veins protruded and pulsed on Blask Salika's forehead as he fiercely waved his hands. The skeleton monster was as though imitating his movements and swiftly swung its arms as well. The tens of meters long bone whip flogged out, bringing with it roaring gales as it frantically clashed with the overlapping layers of the Ocean of Swords. Boom, boom. The Ocean of Swords seemed to be divided, forming an opening amid its wake. Countless sounds of the explosion shortly followed, but the Bone Whip's momentum seemed unstoppable as it crushed the overlapping layers of the Sword Sea. In just the blink of an eye, it already appeared hundreds of meters away right before Daoist Sichuan's eyes. Even while facing such a predicament, only disdain and contempt were present in Daoist Sichuan's eyes. A chilling voice then came out of her mouth, Humph, just this bit of skill? You'll face your defeat today if this is the best you can do. The sword images that looked like they were being defeated eventually turned into a long sword, dancing and hovering around her. Quickly, it began absorbing the heaven and earth energy in the surrounding area frantically. Although the world energy in the surroundings was very thin, the rapid rotation of the sword sent out a blazing radiance as if a blazing and scorching sun was sending out its brilliant rays amid the darkness. Swords of Blazing Sun, Infinite Beams The moment Daoist Zixuan's voice came out, countless sword beams unceasingly burst from the blazing sun, shooting at the skeleton monstrosity. Each sword blade was tens of meters long, and now seemingly formed a long sword chain in the sky. Thousands of sword images slashed down, while the impact force shattered the bone whip in the skeleton monster's hand. The rainbow-like sword beams didn't stop and unceasingly striking forward, shattering the skeleton's arm and tearing its body. In just a short few breaths, both the skeleton monster's arms were shattered and a few wide holes were present in its chest. Be careful. Two black shadows suddenly streaked upward from the two ships belonging to the Celestial Wizard Clan like two lightning bolts. As the two people bit the tip of their tongue, they each spew out a blood fog, which quickly flashed and appeared in the dense black mist. While each holding their own staff, the two men unleashed their magic power to form a black globe shield around them. Crack. The skeleton monster was finally crushed by the sword blades, and the countless others now slashed down to crush the black shield down. A series of cracks began to appear on the black shield while the two black-robed old men cast incantation as two giant axes then formed over the shield. Slash. The two old men shouted at the same time, causing the two humongous axes to quickly merge into one. With an irresistible force, it crashed down to greet the sword beams head-on. At this moment, the paled Blask Salak, looking particularly dire, suddenly took out a silver needle more than ten centimeters long and fiercely pierced his own heart. At the moment he pulled it out, a stream of blood jetted out from his chest. Right as the blood mist touched the surrounding black fog, a dreadful black flame blazed out with a terrifying heat wave, boiling the seawater underneath and causing the death of countless fish and shrimp, covering the ocean with their dead bodies. Sanguine Hex A look of madness was gleaming in Blask Salika's eyes. The moment the black flame fused into the obsidian giant axe, the axe's size became hundreds of meters in size. With its striking might increasing its strength several times, it moved down to crush the sword blade in front, shattering them like splitting bamboo as it blasted its path forward with irresistible force towards Daoist Zixuan. Shit! Daoist Zixuan shouted a curse, and her figure instantly streaked up much higher into the sky. Although the tenebrous domain in the surroundings obstructed her, she was still able to dash away a kilometer higher in the sky in an instant, freeing herself from the shrouding of the black fog. In the next moment, her longsword also followed lightning fast back to her hand. However, the sword that used to look brilliant with flickering cold light now had a visible crack on its blade, while the corrosive black fog continued to linger around it. Chapter 960 Fighting for Survival With just a glance, Daoist Zixuan knew that the sword that had accompanied her for hundreds of years had been practically ruined by the corroding black fog, 
My magic weapon. Her lips quivered with distress. Her whole unitary sect had many magic weapons and tools, but the top tier ones were few and far between. She received this sword as an inheritance from the sex elder, her master. She had painstakingly nourished it with her true origin power for hundreds of years, yet all of it went to waste now. At this time, gushing killing intent finally birthed inside Daoist Sichuan's heart despite the firm mind she had been cultivating. She truly hated all these celestial wizard people and was hardly able to contain herself from killing all of them. Yet, her sane self still reminded her that it would be a huge endeavor, even if she staked everything. Even if she did try by staking everything and going all out, it was highly likely that she'd also die in the process, dragging her ten disciples on the ship into this battle. A few kilometers away, Tang Xiao could clearly see the battle scene in the distance through the high-powered binoculars. The outcome of the fight so far was not within his expectations, as only three experts of the Celestial Wizard Clan were able to take the upper hand and force Daoist Sichuan to retreat, and her magical sword was also ruined. It's really a pity. Tang Xiao shook his head secretly. Mo Ab put down the binoculars and said, I think that whole unitary sex female expert won't be able to face these celestial wizard people. Also, there's something strange with that black fog. It's so corrosive and able to corrode and ruin her sword. Yeah, if there was only one of the wizards, Daoist Sichuan would have been able to kill him easily. Tang Xiao nodded and added, but she's facing against three while her opponents excel at team cooperation. Killing the three of them will prove very difficult for her. With her current situation, she'd pay a grave price to kill those three, even if she puts her life on the line. I think the Celestial Wizard Clan has also brought some other experts besides those three, boss, added Moao in a deep voice. There are more than 40 more people on those two ships, so it's very likely that some more powerful experts are hiding among them. No, there are no more powerful experts on those two ships. Tang Xiao shook his head after there was silence for a short while. But there are some men on the newly arrived ship. They are at least not weaker than those three. Mo Ao was stunned, but recovered quickly to lift up the binoculars to look in the surroundings again. He quickly found that there was another ship near the two previous ships. There were only a few people on it, about a dozen, but the old man sitting on a chair on the deck looked to be strikingly atypical. The Celestial Wizard Clan's reinforcements just arrived? Boss, it will be very difficult for those whole unitary sect cultivators to return back alive if we don't help them. Yeah, replied Tang Xiao. He then shot a glance at Jean Chansey's group of ten from the whole unitary sect and added, this sect has a long history and heritage that has been passed down for millenniums. The cultivation resources they have hoarded must be huge given that Jean Chansey and his Marshall brothers were able to reach the foundation establishment stage despite their young age, therefore, this sect must have invested a lot of resources on them. We have an agreement with this sect, and I need cultivation resources from them, so Daoist Sichuan mustn't die. Would you like me to contact everyone on the Ninth Island to come over? asked Muo. No need. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, Our men are at the foundation establishment stage, so they won't be able to fight in the air for a long time. Their true essence power will be consumed quickly and they will fall into problems once they join the fight. We need to lure these celestial wizard people to the Ninth Island. Let me do it, boss, said Moo. Tang Xiao thought about it and nodded. I'll give you this task later, but not now. We're going to rescue the whole unitary sex people once they are in dire peril. With a life-saving grace that they owe us, we'll have much better leverage in the next business deals with them. You're really wise, boss, praised Mo Ah while raising his thumbs up. <laughs> Tang Xiao couldn't help but burst into laughter and said, You also learn to flatter now, Ah? Mo Ao let out hollow laughter in response while scratching the back of his head, saying, Anyhow, boss. I'll only be able to save Daoist Sichuan if we wait for all the Celestial Wizard Clan experts to join the fray. What are we gonna do with Jean Chansey and the nine others? 
Don't worry about them, said Tang Shou. These celestial wizard clansmen came for revenge in a blood vendetta, so you only need to tell them that we're the ones who killed their clansmen. I'm sure they won't pay much attention to Jean Chansey and the rest. In the sky, Daoist Zixuan also saw the arrival of another liner. After observing it, she knew that they were from the celestial wizard clan, causing her to finally feel nervous. She was confident that she could escape easily should she choose to flee, but all the disciples she had trained and fostered with painstaking efforts until they reached foundation establishment stage, would hardly be able to survive the pursuit of the celestial wizard clan experts. What should I do now? Daoist Sichuan was anxious and restless. She couldn't watch her ten pupils have any tragedy. She brought up all of them, taught them cultivation art and how to cultivate it, and watched them grow up in the process. In her heart, Jean Chansey and his martial brothers and sisters were her children. The Blask Salak trio originally wanted to chase Daoist Sichuan, but after they found that their clansmen had caught up, they immediately gave up on the idea since the Grand Elder who held higher standing than them was on that ship. Welcome Grand Elder. The three old men landed on the incoming liner and respectfully greeted the old man sitting on the chair looking past his prime, Astrius Salak. The latter's eyelids opened, and he glanced over at the three old men before finally laying his eyes on Blask Salak, asking, You're injured? The enemy is a very formidable Chinese cultivator, Grand Elder, said Blask Salak with a bitter expression. I'm not her match at all, so I used blood hex in the fight. This made Astrius Salika's expression slightly changed and he said with a heavy voice, you're too reckless. Conjuring the blood hex will damage your life force and it will be very difficult for you to break through to the realm of wizard Avis, for the rest of your life. Rest assured, Grand Elder. Blask Salik hurriedly said, I happened to get an obscura magus fructus when I was traveling many years ago. I can make up for the shortened lifespan by taking this fruit. Astrius Salik looked surprised and nodded. I see. Then you can ignore the effect of using blood hex since you have the obscura magus fructus. But still, the lifespan you can recover by this fruit is only a few hundred years. Unless it's absolutely necessary, you are not to chant the blood hex again. I understand, replied Blask Salik hurriedly. Afterward, Astrius Salik slowly looked up. His eyes looked immensely deep, as though they contained infinite mystery within. Even though Daoist Sichuan was standing thousands of meters away in the sky, he could still clearly see her. Come down. His voice torrentially transmitted far away and eventually was carried into Daoist Sichuan's ears. The latter fell into silence for a moment before she finally floated down from the sky. After she landed on her ship, she shot a look at Astrius Salik a kilometer away and sneered. No wonder the Celestial Wizard Clan acts so bold and dares to take my whole unitary sect as an enemy, huh? It turns out that it was because of you, the Grand Elder of the Celestial Wizard Clan, Astrius Salik. It's been a few centuries, so I'm really curious as to why an old fart like you hasn't died yet. Ah. Uh. It's been 300 years since we last met. Right, Daoist Sichuan, replied Astrius with a light smile. I really didn't expect that you'd be as beautiful as you were then. I'm still beautiful as ever indeed, but you're about to become an old skeleton, Astrius, sneered Daoist Sichuan. Do you really want to tear all of the decorum with my whole unitary sect? There's no need to lose all decorum between us. Astrius Salik shook his head. Your whole unitary sect resides in the East region, far away from my celestial wizard clan. But still, two elders of my clan have been killed here, hence, it's a must for my clan to find the murderer to avenge their deaths. If you killed those two elders of my clan, then I'll put the fault on you, and your sect and my clan will no longer be decent and will settle this feud with battle. Daoist Sichuan was silent for a moment and coldly humphed, humph. I already told your men that we're not the ones who killed your clansmen, yet my disciples and those two clansmen of yours had feuds regardless. If you want to put this account on our head, then bring it on. A feud? What feud are you talking about? asked Astrius Salik with raised brows. 
your celestial wizard clansmen massacred ordinary people, which is not something I can tolerate either, answered Daoist Sichuan. Murderers are murderers. Now that they killed ordinary people, then they must be prepared to be killed by stronger people as well. Stronger people, huh? Astrius Salak snorted and said, Who are the powerhouses you're referring to? I won't tell you. Daoist Sichuan shook her head. Astrius Salika's figure suddenly floated up and instantly appeared above the sea tens of meters away from Daoist Sichuan. His feet then landed on the surface of the sea, yet the ocean didn't even wet his boots. He calmly shot a deep stare at Daoist Sichuan while faintly smiling. Since you don't want to tell me about it, I'll force it out of your mouth. It's been three hundred years since our last encounter. I really want to know how strong the proud woman of the whole unitary sect is currently. This time, Daoist Sichuan's complexion changed. She could tell that this old man's cultivation was definitely not inferior to hers. Given the aura emitting out from Astrius, he must have broken through the realm of Magus Avis. From what she knew about the Celestial Wizard Clan, those at the Magus Avis realm were comparable to powerhouses at the Golden Core stage for cultivators. You want to fight? Then let's go. Daoist Zixuan grabbed the long swords on Jean Chanzi's back. Suddenly, a huge aura erupted from her once again. As she glared at Astrius Salek, she didn't hurry to move, and instead wanted her disciples to evacuate safely first. Thank <laughs> you.